What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Demsack. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at a bit of hardware that we have. Uh, so we've got the LAN turtle and we're going to plug it in and see what it can do. Yeah, so I know the Bash Bunny just come out. I don't have one yet. Um, I do want one, but the next best thing, it really does seem like it's the LAN turtle. Uh, obviously you can't emulate keyboard and stuff with it, but you can do a lot of the other cool stuff that you may want to do. So let's get to it. We've got one already plugged in with, uh, through the ethernet. So if we just plug it into the laptop, if I can find the hole. <clears throat> so we should get, uh, if we go onto uh, devices, not devices, into, where is the, there. Ooh. And if we go here, and it just disappears. That's what we want, isn't it? There we go. And then we just need to set a the default IP for it. So it's one seven two. Look, look, Windows, please, not now. One seven two sixteen dot eighty four, and then we will give it a four. Uh, we can leave the default gateway, can't we? So if we press OK. And what we need to do is open up your preference of SSH client. So we're just going to use uh, MOBA for this. So what we need to do is SSH and then root at the IP address. So it's uh, 172. Dot sixteen dot eighty four dot one, <clears throat> and then we have the password of shells with a three instead of a e because leet, I assume. Uh, three, oh, that was it. Uh, yes, enter in a new password. <laughs> what should we put in? Um, I'm just going to do test for now because. If we go into config, uh, one of the things we uh, want to do first is just check for updates because I've had this for a little while and this is always good to check for updates with whatever we do. Oh, not that found. Will be erased. Control C. We'll just leave it. I won't touch it. So, um, as you can see, uh, MOBA has gone a bit crazy because it's finished. So after we've waited for it to reboot after a little while, we're going to look back into it if I could actually spell SSH properly. Root at 172.16.84.1. I remembered it. Yeah, that's fine. Interesting, so we didn't need to put in a MOBA, so it saved it. Fair. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is why we like MOBA, see? I like MOBA for that reason, because I'm a bad person. So uh, let's do the password again, Just test. Obviously, don't use test on your legitimate one because no. that's just a recipe for a, a bad time. Bad, bad time. Um, so there's nothing else we need to do in the configuration uh, menu. So if we go to modules, <laughs> yeah, and then you want to uh, enable it. And then you want to start it. And that's okay. And then hit okay again. And then you want to go to configure. And then from here, you can go to the directory. And this is where you can start downloading modules. So if you hit yes. And that's a nice feature. It tells you that it's going to make an outbound connection to LAN Turtle. So, for example, if you had this in a target's network and they were doing actual like logging and monitoring and all that kind of stuff, that would be a massive red flag if there's a device on the network making a call out to there. But as we're setting this up on our internal network, it's not a massive issue. Um, so this is where we're going to set up a few different things. And uh, the only module we're going to set up right now is the auto search module, which is the one there. So enter there. And then OK. And that's installed. So now we can go back. Uh, we can just cancel, cancel yeah. Probably, yeah. And then go back. And then uh, we can go to auto search if you select that. 
and then we can configure it. And this is where I'm going to quickly spin up a DigitalOcean VPS. <laughs> so I've just set up a VPS really quickly. So what you're going to want to do is do root app and it's 178.62.34.180. And obviously that's going to change for your, um, your VPS or wherever you're going to do it and ours is on port 22. So I'm just going to submit that and then he's going to enable it, which means it'll run on startup. And then uh, there's one other thing we have to do, which this doesn't really make uh, obvious, but what we want to do is go back and then back again. And then we want to exit. So what we want to do is do uh, ssh-copy-id root space root at 178.62.34.180. Yeah. So if, uh, apparently what we need to do is generate an SSH uh, key. So SSH dash key gen space dash I. Um, no, sorry, dash T uh, space RSA. And then you just want to hit enter and then enter no passphrase otherwise it won't be able to do it on boot and there we go um that should now be set up so we can redo that ssh copy id yes and in this case the password is uh what so that was my fault in that case uh the vm by the default was using public key only. So we're gonna to have to set it up to use password just so we can copy the uh, key across. So Aaron's just gonna rerun that command now. And in our case, the password is I like boats. And that's now added. So in theory, we should be able to pull that uh, turtle out. And when we plug it back in, we should be able to access it from our VPS. Mm -hmm. So this is going to make out like we've just plugged it into a power bank um, and we've plugged it into some corporate ethernet. So we're now on the server and what I'm going to do is do a net start dash tpan which will show me all the TCP ports that are open and we're looking for 2222 so we can see here it's now open. So what that should mean is we can SSH to root at a localhost port 2222 yes and the password was test, and we have access to the turtle from a machine which, well, this is based in London and we're obviously not in London. So from here, uh, we can configure it as we would before, but this is where it gets interesting because this has a full version of Linux on it. We could start tunneling our traffic through it and access the internal network that way. We won't be doing that in this video. This is just more to show you how easy it is to set up that module. Um, so I'm going to disconnect now and let Aaron go back to uh, configuring it as, uh, well, a device where we can plug it in and steal credentials. We uh, do what we did before and I'm just going to press up because it's easier. And the password of test. Yes, we will save that. And if we go to module configuration again, if we uh, press select on module manager and go to configure and go to directory and yes what we're going to do here is we're going to do a uh, responder and quick reds and we're just going to press ok and ok again then we're just going to go back back again and then we can see they're both there so if we select quick reds so if we select quick reds first configure. and we go to configure and yes, we're just going to let this do its thing. This is a really nice script because it's literally just a matter of installing it, letting it do go through this process and then it should be working. That's done. We're just going to press OK. Um, and then we're just going to go to enable and then we're just going to go back. That's it. And that's it. Why is it not on? So now, because it's not, so 
let's explain this menu a little bit. Uh, the X's in the boxes on the modules menu means it's actively running now. When you enable something, that means essentially make this run on boot. And uh, we've not rebooted it since we've installed Quick Creds so and we've not started it and we don't really... Well, we could make it run on Aaron's laptop, but I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate that too much. So, yeah, now that's done, we can unplug it and shove it into my laptop and hopefully it'll upset it. <laughs> so, right here we've got our locked Windows 10, Windows 10 machine. And um, what I'm going to do is it's, uh, it's set up to automatically capture this USB device. So I'm going to plug it in. And what we're going to do is we're waiting for uh, the yellow light or the amber light to start blinking. And it's just started blinking. And when it stops blinking, when it goes solid, that means we've managed to grab a credential. So that's just gone solid now. So that means we should have some credentials. So I'm going to hand this back to Aaron and uh, let's see what we've got. We've used Responder in the past and that's literally all this is using, but it also has the added benefit of hosting a DHCP server. So when you plug it into the machine, it requests an IP, it gets given one, and then it tries to route its traffic through us. And when that happens, we're able to basically spoof any NetBIOS name it's looking for. And because our VM is on a domain, uh, luckily, uh, a lot of NetBIOS traffic happens. And as a result, a lot of SMB traffic. So what Responder's gone ahead and done is saved us now a, uh, a file which has the hash of the uh, logged in user, which uh, Aaron's going to show us how to get to now. So if we do a CD and loot, and if we go into a uh, six, uh, we will see the SMB v2 um, file. So what we can do is do cat and then SMB, and then there's all of the hashes. Yeah. So what you can see is a lot of uh, well, the username and a password hash. Um, luckily, Responder puts these all in a uh, format where you can shove them straight into John. Uh, we're not going to do this in this case because the password was just password. <laughs> um, but you could ha easily just copy and paste that into John the Ripper and have a go at cracking them. And this is all from a locked machine, so it's pretty cool.